Spirit of the Lord. Pray that the Lord will draw us near to the cross. Good morning, saints. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning in thy divine presence and the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we thank thee for thy blessing thou bestowed upon us. Oh, we thank you this morning for the night rest last night and waking us up and guiding us out from the house of prayer one more time. Oh, we give you all the honor, praise, and we give you the glory for being our elder. She died this morning, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless each and every one of us with the blessing. You see, we stand in need of it right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Just bless all the members of Mount Zion Church here, Heavenly Father. The ones that are here, the ones that just can't make it, and the ones that are on their way, Heavenly Father. You have been good to all of us, and we just want to say thank you one more time, Heavenly Father. Just bless our pastor, Heavenly Father, this morning, and his family, Lord Jesus. Continue to lead and guide them, Lord Jesus. Continue to anoint him that he could preach your word, Heavenly Father. We thank you and we praise you, Heavenly Father. Bless all the sick and the shuttings everywhere, all over the land and country, the church and healing by his tribe. We all are healed this morning, Heavenly Father, in your name, Heavenly Father. Bless our children and our grand this morning, Heavenly Father. Bless them one by one and one together, Heavenly Father. Our neighbors and neighbors, children, Lord Jesus, bless them, Lord Jesus. We have the Father's bless all over the world, the foreign countries is everywhere they touch. Right now, Lord, you just let your presence be known as you are God. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Bless our president and his staff this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Just continue to glorify us, Lord Jesus. As we travel day to day, keep us safe and keep us together, Heavenly Father, in your name, Lord Jesus. You said you're coming back one day for a church. We are the church, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We praise you this morning, Heavenly Father. Somebody out there don't know you in the parts of their sin, but you know them, Lord Jesus. You standing at the door knocking, Lord Jesus. All they have to do is the door. You go in, you sit with them, and we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. And when, Lord Jesus, this Time is over, Lord Jesus. Give all of us a home in your kingdom somewhere. Please bless me. I sing the precious name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. We use our scripture. The scriptures we come from Psalms 75. God, we praise you. For your name is near. We just need to praise him today. Praise him because his name is near. <laughs> uh, I got this new phone and uh, it mess up every time I get up here. So, But we praise God. Song 75, that way it starts. Oh, yes, I'll close along with thee. Right at Jesus, if you please. Oh, hope they're walking close to thee. Let it be. But thou art strong. 
Jesus is a way Oh, 
Lord of the choir for an opening song. you to help me Lord, 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 I want you to help me in the choir we're singing and I'll be back with the preach word. Amen. Amen. Again, Heavenly Father, we're permitted, Lord, to come before the throne of grace. Father, we come humbly as we know how, Lord, calling on your good and glorious name. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you go along with us throughout these services, Lord. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you bless us, Lord, that you keep us, Lord God. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you forgive us, Lord, for any matter of sin we've committed, Lord. 
remember it no more, Lord, but just strengthen us, Lord, on every week and leaning side, Lord. Father, we praise your name today, Lord. We glorify your name today, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord, for you alone art worthy, Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence, Lord. Father, we commend these services unto thee, Lord. Father, we pray that you touch all those that hear, Lord God. Touch all those that participate, Lord God. Father, we pray, Lord, a special anointing, Lord God on the mighty man of God, Lord God, the angel of this church, Lord, whom you have sent, Lord. Father, continue, Lord, to lead God and direct him, Lord. Father, guide him today, Lord God. God, every word, Lord God, that is spoken, Lord God. Just have your way, I pray, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, every heart that hears, Lord God. Help them, Lord. Help us all, Lord, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today, Lord God, that we may grow thereby, Lord. Father, give us a closer walk with thee, Lord God. Give us a closer walk, Lord. Father, touch, heal, deliver, and set free right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, let your Holy Spirit rule and reign, Lord. Let it reign. Let it reign. And Father God, when we've said and done all, Lord God, that you ordained for us to do on this side, Lord. Father, we're asking in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you just give us that home, Lord God, where we can praise your name forever world without end without the loss of one is our prayer in the precious name of jesus we pray amen scripture today I'm taking from Romans chapter 12 and I'm going to read to you hearing verses 1 through 5 amen hard to find the stopping place and it reads, this is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you pre present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, that every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of the other. Amen. 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 And God add a blessing to the reading of his word.
we are, we are climbing. climbing. Take off. Climbing, climbing, take off.
trustees, all the officers of Mount Zion, all you, the members and friends and all those joining us by Facebook. We just thank God for you all this morning. And this morning, if you would go with me to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, just one verse. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. And that verse reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen? Yes. The power of a new creature. The power of a new creature. Let us pray. Lord God in heaven, we thank and praise and bless your name. Father, we thank you for this preaching hour. And we thank you for being the great preacher. Fill me now afresh with your spirit and use me to your greater glory, God. Your people are waiting to hear from on high. Speak, Lord. And Lord, although... It's preaching time. This is still your time with your people, God. And so we ask you now just to bless your people with what they stand in need of. One needs a healing. One needs deliverance. One needs salvation. One needs just to be strengthened in their faith. Whatever, Lord God, it is. Bless them indeed, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The power of a new creature. Now, if you had a friend who came to you and told you that they had joined a gym and they were going to work out three times a week, you would expect to see some change in their life over time. If that person is working in the gym, you expect to see some weight loss. You expect to see some inches lost. You expect to see them build some muscle. You expect to see their health improve. But if over time that person gains weight and can barely lift a 20 pound box and struggles to climb up a flight of stairs, you question whether they're really in the gym or not. And you know, one thing you, you find out about gym membership, because many of us have them, but membership alone does not bring change. Some of us treat church membership and, sal and salvation a lot like we treat gym memberships. People join the church, but they never show any evidence they're actually in Christ. When things get difficult, they walk in fear rather than in faith. When times get hard, they give up rather than wait on God. They struggle to walk in love and, and easily lose their, their, their peace. When things happen in their lives, when a relationship fails, they fall apart. They begin to seek answers and affirmation from things of the world instead of waiting on the Lord or going to God in prayer. 
just like we have certain expectations of a person who's supposed to be going to the gym. We have certain expectations about those who claim to be in Christ. Just as we uh, might observe changes in a gym member, we look, we look for changes in those who call themselves believers to see if there's any evidence they're actually followers of Christ. <clears throat> After observing their, their actions and, 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 and lifestyle, you begin to understand what they're really doing. If they're loving more, if they're giving more, if they're worshiping more, if they're praising more, if there's a, an evident change in their life, because the scripture says, behold, all things will become new. Behold me, stop, look and listen, check it out, you can see a difference. Well, Gandhi, Gandhi, after he had watched how some of the saints of God act and how they treat one another and treat others, he said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. But our text in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that ought not be. Because it says, therefore, if any man can I walk through this, 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 I know it's just one verse, but can I walk through it? Just going to take my time with it. The verse begins with the word therefore, which means something occurred or was said prior to this that led Paul to declare that anyone in Christ is a new creature. So we have to back up to verse 16, which says, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. That verse 16 tells us that Christ is no longer regarded simply as a man who walked among us in the flesh. Christ is risen with all power, and we know him as Redeemer. We know him as Messiah. We know him as Lord. We know him as the one who sent us a comforter who would empower us. And when we come to the knowledge of the truth about who Christ truly is and accept him as Lord, God brings a, about a great change within us, making us a new creature. Today, there's a, a full understanding of who Jesus is. And Jesus is not that itty bitty baby that we like to sing about sometimes. He's not just a prophet, but Jesus is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, Mary's baby, the Rose of Sharon, the Bob and Gilead. He's the Lily of the Valley, the bright and morning star. He's our glory and the lifter of our head. He's like rivers of water flowing through dry ground. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the anointed one. He's our savior. And he's our Lord. Paul says now it is clear who Jesus is. In, in, in all his majesty, in all his power, he has bestowed upon us the ability to change from what we used to be, to walk in newness of life. For he says here, Paul says, therefore if any man, meaning man, woman, boy, or girl, be in Christ, they are new creatures. <laughs> and they, they serve a powerful and majestic Christ. See, you can't be in Christ and Christ not do something new in you. If you're in Christ, just like if you're in the gym and you're really in the gym and you're really applying yourself, you can't continue to walk around overweight and slow and flabby when you're in Christ. You can't continue to be spiritually fat and slow and, and, and powerless. And this is true 
for any man. It's true for the rich and it's true for the poor. It's true for the sick and it's true for the well. It's true for the drunk. It's true for the addict. It's true for the prostitute. It's true for the homeless. I don't care who you are. If you in Christ, you're a new creature. No matter what you used to do, no matter what you used to be, if you're in Christ, you are new. But let me be clear, beloved. You won't become new just by joining the church or singing on the choir or, or, or serving as an usher. The only thing that makes you new is the blood of Jesus. When you're in Christ, you, you, you're yoked up with Jesus. You're in oneness with him. You're united with him by, by faith and, and are in him as the branches in the vine. And you get all of your nourishment and support from him. In John, in, in John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. And he says to us, abide in me and I in you. And he says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. In other words, Jesus was telling us that our help, all our help, all our strength, all our blessings come from the Lord. Without him, we can do nothing. And when 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it, 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 it simply says to us, once we are born again, we become a new creation of God. God does a new and invisible thing in us that results in us being transformed. The old things such as our human thoughts and laws and rules, our worldly dreams and earthly standards, they pass away. And we are empowered to overcome the flesh and choose to develop new appetites, new desires, new understanding, and new thoughts. Now note that I said that we can choose to develop new appetites and new desires and new thoughts. We can choose to, but the question is, will we exercise that power to choose? Or will we treat it like we treat our gym membership. If you choose not to get in the gym, those weights, those treadmills, those steppers, those bikes, those barbells, I don't care how many in the gym, they are of no use to you if you choose not to go and not to use them. And they're not of any, they're not useless to you because they can't help you build a better, more powerful body but they're useless to you because you choose not to be in the gym. What you're saying, Pastor? Christ has empowered the believer, but if you don't access what he's made available to you, if you don't operate in Christ, then you give up the power he has given you to change you and to impact the world around you. And to be in Christ, we have to come out of something else. We got to come out of some things, come out of some places, come out from some people. If we're going to be in Christ, if you're going to be in Christ, you got to come out of sin. If you're going to be in Christ, you got to come out of gossip. If you're going to be in Christ, you got to come out of hate. If you're going to be in Christ, you got to come out of addiction. If you're going to be in Christ, you got to come out of backbiting. If you're going to be in Christ, you got to come out of discord. And no, all these things don't happen overnight. We come as we are, but we allow the Holy Spirit to do a good and invisible work in us. And I want you to understand, Christ has done his work. On the cross, he said, it is finished. So Christ's work is finished. And our position as new creatures are secure. But it's our job. 
to keep working toward the newness that God has given us. And we do that by putting off the old and putting on the new. Let me read you what Colossians 3, 5 through 10 says in, in, in a New Living Translation. It says, so put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. It says you used to do these things when your life was still a, a part of the world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. It goes on to say, and don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. When, if, when any man is in Christ, they've been empowered to strip off the old man and put on the new. They've been empowered to become like the creator and be like him. The Bible, the Bible implores us to get rid of that old sinful nature. Throw out the lustful, corrupted way we used to live and allow the Spirit of God to renew our thoughts. Walk in the likeness of God, righteous and holy. Yes, walk in the, uh, 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 the likeness of God, righteous and holy. And I know folks will say, well, Pastor, how we can be holy? I'm going to do some things. I'm going to sin. I'm just a man. I'm just a, a flesh and blood. But the Bible, tells, number one, you're not just flesh and blood. You're a spirit. You have a soul. You happen to live in a fleshly body. But we have to work toward holiness, even in this fallen world, and as we grapple with our flesh. For, for God tells us, be ye holy as I am holy. He didn't say, act like you're holy. He didn't say, try to be holy. He didn't say, fake being holy. He said, be ye holy, which means that we can attain to it. Yes, it takes work. Yes, it might take a lifetime, but we got to keep working toward holiness. And, and anything that belongs to God is holy. Belong to God. Holiness means to be called out, set aside for the service of God. Holiness means stop serving the world and serve the Lord. Holiness means not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. I didn't say be perfect, be holy. And no, this, this journey won't be without struggle, but keep pressing. There will be some losses along the way, but keep pressing. There will be some valleys and desert places, but keep pressing. We'll have some victories, and we'll have some defeats. We'll have some ups, and we'll have some downs. We'll have some peaks, and we'll have some valleys. You'll get knocked down sometime. Yes, you'll fall into sin sometime. The first John 1 and 9 said, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So, beloved, keep pressing. Keep pressing and let the Holy Spirit renew you. Whatever your old self might have been, let it die and rise anew with Christ. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 517 it is saying that you ought to be a new creature but that you are a new creature there's a deep and abiding change that takes place in us by the power of the god of god working through the holy spirit we are made brand new we can't explain it we can't rationalize it 
We can't come up with any uh, mathematical or, or scientific equation or, or, or computer program to explain it. It's just a supernatural occurrence from God. But by faith, by faith, we know that he's begun a good work in us. And that the good work he's begun in us, he'll complete it until the coming of Jesus Christ. So the expectation is for us to live a life as a new creation. Our actions have to kept up, catch up with the new heart and new position and spiritual awareness that God has given us. Just like you might decide to go to the gym, you must decide to get in Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to stretch you, to challenge you, to grow you, to sanctify you, to push out the hole and to bring holiness and righteousness in your life. That old bad attitude, that old, that, that old nasty uh, uh, disposition, that, that old backward way of thinking and, 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 and bad conversations, we got to push those things out and let the fruit of the Spirit rise up in us. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Finally, finally this, verse, this verse says to us that all things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Paul tells the Jews that their prejudice has to pass away. Their pride has to pass away. The love of ceremonies and tradition had to pass away. He even tells the Jews, the Gentiles, he said your worship of idols got to pass away. The love of sin got to pass away. And for us, when we're in Christ, all things must pass away. Selfish ambition must pass away. Unholy acts must pass away. Bad habits must pass away. Bad thoughts must pass away. Unhealthy relationships must pass away. Legalistic attitudes and fruitless traditions must pass away. The new creature is not like the old corrupt man. It's a completely new man. Something deposited in us that becomes, uh, uh, that becomes new with new principles of grace and holiness. We see through, when we become new creatures, we see through new eyes. We hear through new ears. We walk with new feet. And we walk and we act with new hands. Those hands that used to hurt now heal. Those tongues that once lied, not once lied now speak truth. Begin to process things differently because now they're filtered differently. See, when you're in Christ, you have access to the power that's in Christ. There's healing in Christ. There's deliverance power in Christ. There's strength in Christ. There's breakthrough power in Christ. That's Christ who rolls with all power in his hands. And when he rose with all power in his hands, he put all things under his feet. And can I tell you something? If you are in Christ and all things are under Christ's feet, then all things are under your feet. If, if we're in Christ, everything that Adam lost in the garden, when he lost dominion, when he lost authority, when he lost power, everything that Adam lost, Christ the last Adam came to restore the kingdom and to restore everything that Adam lost. All things and everything that, that Jesus has said to us, we can have it. First of all, he restored dominion, authority, and power. And he said to us that he came that we might have peace. He said he came that we might have joy and our joy might be full. He said he came that we might have life. He said that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly.
family. And he said that, that we would have power. He said in Acts 1 and 8, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. He said that we would do great things. As a matter of fact, he said that we'd do greater things. Can I tell you, beloved, if you in Christ, great things are in you. You are a power packed creature. You are a God got it creature. You are a Holy Ghost filled creature. You are a creature of purpose. You are a creature of promise. A creature of power. And if you're walking in Christ and walking in power, then you shouldn't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Every stray word, every false teaching shouldn't grab hold in your life. But you should be an overcomer, a more than a conqueror to him that loves you. You ought to be a, a, a prayer warrior, a faith walker. If you in Christ, you're a first John 4 and 4 preacher. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you in Christ, you're a Philippians 4, 13 preacher. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you're in Christ, you're a Galatians 2 and 20 preacher. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If you in Christ, you're a 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 creature. It tells us that when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became a new creature, I put away childish things. If you in Christ, you got to go up. Put away childish things. And walk as a mature Christian in the power of God. Put away everything that's unlike Christ. Unbelief, you got to put it away. Fear, you got to put it away. Unforgiveness, you got to put it away. Carnal mindedness, you got to put it away. Love for the world and the things of the world, put it away. Put your sins away. Put your will away. And get in Christ. Everything you need is in Christ. Your healing is in Christ. Your deliverance is in Christ. Your breakthrough is in Christ. You got overcoming power in Christ. You got giving up power in Christ. You got resurrection power in Christ. All you need is in Christ. If any man, if any boy, if any girl, if any woman is in Christ, they are new preachers. All things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things are become new. He's doing a good and new and invisible work in you, beloved. But you have to yield to the Holy Spirit and let him do that work. Let him sanctify you. Let him push out that old nasty stuff. And let him fill you with the things of God. And then you walk in faith, knowing that you've been empowered to be an overcomer. You've been empowered to be the head and not the tail. You've been empowered to be above and not beneath. You are blessed and not cursed. You are well and not sick. You are rich and not poor. You are, you are the king's kid, member of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are blood-bought saint. The blood of Jesus is draped over your life. You're a new creature. You're a new creature. So stop relying on those old ways of, of solving your problems. Stop relying on those old ways of getting back at people. But walk in the newness of life and the power of God. There might be one. There might be one who doesn't know Christ as Savior. And if you don't know Christ as Savior, you're not in Christ. 
and therefore you don't have access to the power to become a new creature. But if you pray this simple prayer with me, you can become saved and indeed be in Christ. Just speak to God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe that he died. And I'm confessing today with my mouth. And I'm believing that you raised him by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let Jesus come into my life and save me. Let him become Lord of my life. And God, fill me with your spirit that I might become a new creature. You prayed that prayer. You say, Father, we just thank you now. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your might. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for how you watch over us, God. You bless us in our going out and our coming in. We thank you. And Father, forgive us of our sin. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, you know all these your people. Those in my sight. And those under the sound of my voice, grant now what they stand in need of, God. Father, there are many who are hurting today, many who are sick. Thank you for being a healer. Thank you for being a comforter. Bless now your people, Lord. Strengthen us all in our walk with you, that we will run on to see what the end is going to be. Bless, Lord God, Mount Zion and the people of Mount Zion. Build us together, Lord God, fitly join together, a spiritual house, seeking after your heart, God. Grow us up. Prepare us that we might, Lord, overcome in this life and in the life to come. Prepare us for those you will send who need, Lord God, the love of Jesus, who need salvation, who need to be strengthened in the faith, Bless, Lord, this community, this Kershaw community. We pray that the, street, the streets are safe, Lord God, that our children are safe, that our families are built together in unity, Lord. Bless this state and bless Governor McMaster as he leads, Lord. Bless this nation. Bless President Biden as he leads, Father. Bless all in leadership position, Father. And give them a heart for your people. And what they do, Lord, they, they do it as unto you and not as unto men or unto parties or unto special interests, God, but unto you. Mm -hmm. And they do it that your people might live together peaceably. Thank you now for these gifts. And yes, we thank you for these givers, God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest with in the Bible for us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.